Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah. We begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. And we begin by sending praise, blessings, and salawat upon his beloved prophet and messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his family. So today in our session uh, on our summer series, Walking with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're going to be covering uh, the humor and the speech of the Prophet sallallahu in our sixth session here. So to begin, last time we talked about the diet and the eating habits of the Prophet sallallahu and, and and focusing on that. And today we're going to transition to his speech and specifically uh, his his general manner of speaking, including his humor. What was it like to converse with the Prophet sallallahu How was he in conversations? And we've touched upon uh, a number of these hadith and traditions that will be shown today and will be talked about today in previous sessions. But this topic and this session specifically will cover his, how he was in a conversation. So uh, as we've been doing at the beginning of each session, what I invite you to do is picture yourself. Picture yourself now after having seen the Prophet ﷺ, having visualized him, seen him in gatherings, seen him interacting with other people, uh, getting a chance to observe him, sitting with him, following him, being in his presence. Now let's pretend and let's imagine that we are uh, having a conversation with him. We're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation so we can observe how he speaks, how he engages us in conversation, and how he generally is in uh, with regards to his humor and speaking. And oftentimes when we think about the Prophet ﷺ, uh, because we we can automatically just assume and we know his speech being a a very distinguished and very uh, distinct speech in that it's, it's, it's flawless. It is one that uh, does not... Uh, bring any kind of perversion or, or deviation. It's one that that uh, invites you and one that brings you closer to God in, in, in all sense of that. But we oftentimes sometimes don't see the humanity in the process of speech and specifically with regard to his lightheartedness, which is covered in uh, the Shamail in its own chapter. So uh, as we mentioned, we're going through uh, hadith that are covered uh, exclusively in, not exclusively in, but, but are just from the Shamail. Um, so we're not you know, pulling from any other kind of source here. We're just focusing on what is covered in the Shema'il at um, And we may mention some other hadith that may be, uh, you know, cited elsewhere, but this is primarily focused here. Um, and there's a chapter in uh, the Shema'il at that covers the lightheartedness of the Prophet ﷺ, but also his humor and, uh, sorry, also his general speech. And so to begin with the narrations here, uh, we begin with the wife of the Prophet Aisha anha, who shares that the Messenger of Allah would not draw out his speech as you all do, referring to being uninterrupted or uh, with haste when, when people are speaking, that he would not draw out his speech as you all do. He would speak clearly, he would speak lucidly, and he would space out his words. Anyone who sat with him would remember what he had said. Uh, and the commentary on this hadith talks about uh, his his clarity of speech is what's being lifted up here, that people could count the words that that he would say in another narration that Aisha uh, relates that the Prophet ﷺ would speak in a way that doesn't, you know, go like a bullet train and you're just like, what just happened? He would speak clearly. He would, um, you know, he, he, he would be able to be succinct with respect to what he needs to say, but he would be able to be clear to where people would be able to understand each and every word that's there. And we've shared this hadith before. And as I mentioned, you'll recognize a number of the hadith because these are relevant when it comes up in the context of what was the Prophet ﷺ like in gatherings? What was the Prophet ﷺ like when people came to seek his help? What was his character like? And we've talked about his character. We've talked about his modesty, his humility. We've talked about how he is in settings and gatherings with other people. So many of these will come up there, but some of these um, are, are, are unique in their own way and we'll be covering them for the first time. Um, we would also see how the Prophet ﷺ, uh, invoked in another hadith to speak to people in their manner of understanding, at their level of understanding. So meeting people where they are. So the Prophet ﷺ would uh, speak in a way that all could hear, all could process, all could uh, take in whether they are the most eloquent, their most, uh, you know, uh, wise and most educated in one space, or uh, they may be uh, the, those who are kind of the most rough around the edges, who don't have, um, you know, the certain mannerisms or who are not uh, of as as privy to some of these nuances and who may not have, uh, you know, a certain level 
uh, of understanding or um, complexity or sophistication that other people may. And, but he'd be able to speak in a manner that everybody uh, who gathered with him, who heard his speech, would be able to take away what he meant and know every single thing, uh, at least by mentioning what he was saying. Uh, Anas ibn Malik shares that the Messenger of Allah would repeat a word three times so that he could be understood that uh, if he was, uh, if, if there was something that he wanted to emphasize, if there was something he wanted people to take away, he would reiterate it. He would he would make sure that people understand what's being meant. He wouldn't just put everything out there and expect that people you know know what he said. Uh, if there's something that he wanted conveyed, he would he would make it known, and he would take that time to reiterate it, whether it's a word or whether it's a statement, whatever it may be. And we've touched upon this following narration in many different settings, uh, but it's such a profound narration um, that comes from uh, Hassan ibn Ali uh, and his, uh, from when he has this conversation with his maternal uncle, uh, Hind ibn Abi Hala, to describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his uh, uncle was an excellent uh, describer. He, this is kind of his, his thing where he would be able to recall uh, exactly what, what things happen and be able to describe um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and his interactions uh, down to like the teeth of a comb very finely uh, to be able to explain what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would do in certain spaces, how he was. Um, and so this was his thing. And uh, we've touched upon it in, with respect to the gatherings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with respect to the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and uh, his routine, his day, what it would look like when he would split his day up. Uh, and today we we dive specifically into how he refers to his speech because he, uh, he uh, Hassan, Imam Hassan ibn Ali, says that I asked my maternal uncle Hind ibn Abi Hala to describe the speech of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he would, uh, he said that he would not speak without need. He would begin and end his speech by mentioning the name of Allah, the most exalted. His speech was compendious, uh, Jawami al Kalim, that it was uh, statements that are succinct, um, but they are uh, in, in wording, but they're abundant in their meaning. So he would be very uh, to the point, but his words were distinguished. They were neither too much nor too few. He was neither coarse nor demeaning. He honored blessings, even if they were small, and he never found fault with any of them. The dunya did not anger him, nor did anything of its affairs. But if the truth was transgressed against, them, uh, against then nothing would quell his anger until he had sought justice for it. He would never become angry for his own sake or seek to avenge himself. When he would point at something, he would do so with his whole hand. He would gesture with his hand while speaking, and he would strike the inside of his left thumb with his right palm. When he was angry, he would turn away. When he was delighted, he would lower his gaze. His laughter was mostly smiles. And when he would laugh, it was as though something like hailstones appeared. That he would hold his blessed tongue from speaking about anything except which concerned him. He would sit with another person until their need was met, never le never leaving them empty-handed. He would uh, either give that person who was requesting something from him their need or a good word, at least. And his cheerful, smiling countenance and character encompassed people such that he became like a father to them, and they became equal in his blessed eyes. And the gatherings that the Prophet ﷺ had, the gatherings were those of forbearance and shyness, patience and trust, Voices were not raised, sanctities were not violated, and odious behavior was not displayed. They were humble, respect was given to those who were elder, mercy was given to those who were young, and preference was given to those who were the wayfarers, the strangers, or the needy. Uh, we see how in previous narrations we've discussed that the Prophet ﷺ would be described as someone whose character was uh, in modesty and humility was that which was shyer than uh, a virgin in her quarters in the sense of relating to the uh, metaphor of the time that that it's like a, a shy bride that someone uh, you have, a, a, you know, the person of the Prophet ﷺ, a, a, a a man amongst men uh, being described in this way by his fellow companions, that this was someone um, who they looked up to, who, th who they were um, seeing as this model, who we see as this model, and someone who in their character was a very naturally shy person. So you can think about what kind of speech it would come from someone who's being described in this kind of shyness, in this kind of modesty, that do you expect someone to have such a boisterous speech, somebody to be, you know, just very loud and uh, loquacious and talking over other people? 
No, you'd probably think that the Prophet in if he's being described as this, that his speech would also follow suit with respect to how he displays himself, that he would not speak in a loud way, he would not be talkative, he would be someone that uh that that watches what they say, he'd be somebody that only speaks when necessary. And this is kind of what we get from this uh tradition. And we see also how in an earlier uh description, I believe by Imam Ali uh, of the Prophet, Sallam, that when he would turn to people, when he would go talk to people, he would do so with his full attention. He would turn towards them fully. He wouldn't just look over his shoulder or give them uh, a side uh, glance. He would he would be talking to somebody. He'd give them their full attention. So knowing that uh, the language that we speak, the speech that we have is not just restricted to our tongue, but also our body language. How are we showing up in conversations uh, from a uh, physical perspective as well? Are we are we att showing our attention by just kind of showing ourselves uh, not as present? Are we on our phones? Are we doing something else? Or are we fully present in front of them? Uh, and we see what the Prophet says, this was something his companions noted was distinct, that if he was talking to somebody, his full front was there and he would be listening to them in full attention. Uh, they, Zayd ibn Thabit shares uh, uh, shares that when we would speak, when he, he, we discussed this hadith earlier, that uh, people came to his house and said, "Tell us about how the Prophet was. You know, share something to us about him, uh, because he was a companion." And so um, Zayd ibn Thabit says that when we would speak about worldly matters, he, the Prophet would do so as well. When we would speak about the hereafter, he, the Prophet would do so as well. And when we would speak about food, he would do so. Likewise, seeing that the Prophet was was a a a, a, a normal human being, he was he was someone who, uh, despite being the Prophet of Allah, despite being rahmatul alamin, despite being the uswatun hasana, the the greatest model to walk the earth, he was someone who still was a human being and lived through the human experience. He experienced hunger. He experienced the world. He had opinions. He was someone who, uh, you know, could meet people and talk to them about things relevant. To them. He wasn't just someone who was solely in, in a spiritual space and, and people only saw him in just this regard. He was the prophet of Allah, but he was also someone he, that could talk to them about what concerned them in their life and relate to them because he too lived in that same world. He wasn't separated from it. Ahmed ibn Allah shares that uh, Allah's messenger used to speak directly with the worst of people, thereby winning their hearts. And he used to do the same to me so that I thought I was the best of people. So again, imagine ourselves. We're in this conversation with the Prophet Sallallahu He has a very shy um, kind of posture. He's, he's, he's modest. He's not speaking out of turn. He's talking about what we might like to talk about. And we're, we're having this conversation. But he's also making us feel, apart from the body language, he's making us feel as if we are the most important person to him uh, and and for him at this moment. And, and that kind of uh, importance that's given, thinking about the psychology that goes behind it. When you feel really heard, when you feel like this person really cares about me, this person, I might be the most beloved person to this, to this person. Just imagine the facial expressions they may show, the the smiles that they may give, the, uh, the uh, affirmation they may give for you to feel so validated in that moment. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ would give to anybody that would come to them uh, with requests or just to be able to talk to them, that they would feel that they are the most beloved. Anas ibn Malik shares that I served Allah's messenger for 10 years and never once did he say oof to me. Never once did he express any kind of expletive or frustration in, in, in a manifested way. Um, he never asked me about something I had done saying, why did you do it? Nor something about I had left undone saying, why did you leave it undone? Allah's messenger was the finest of human beings in character. Again, we've talked about the Prophet's character, but think about specifically in the context of speech. Prophet was not one to use profanity. Prophet was not one to uh, express that frustration in such a way to uh, belittle anybody or, or express it in a manner when we say, oof, you know, it's, it's like, you know, this kind of frustration, um, we see it, you know, oftentimes come out uh, when we uh, you see in, in our society, uh, when when people use certain other people's names in vain or, uh, you know, certain holy figures' names in vain and whatnot, we, we don't see this with the Prophet Sallallahu and that uh, he wouldn't be someone that would be aggressive. He wouldn't be someone that would be pestering uh, in this way. You know, Anas ibn Malik was a child that was sent to serve um, the Prophet and help him out from his family uh, and to be able to just kind of um, help him with miscellaneous tasks or things that were needing to be done, any chores. Uh, and, and the Prophet being, you know, uh, an older 
kind of uh, person in this regard and person of authority didn't mistreat this child, didn't didn't even uh, express any kind of frustration. And to the counter, when we see different reports, we see how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually would um, encourage the children to be able to play together. Would would uh, when he would send Anas out for a task, and if Anas became distracted, um, he would go and uh, he would just have uh, he would just tease Anas. He would he would come and and in a humorous way saying that well, you know you didn't finish the task that I I told you, and he would just come and uh, jo joyfully be able to interact with them. He wouldn't be harsh like we sometimes often see uh, in our spaces where this may happen. And so thinking about how the Prophet Sallallahu character also informed his speech and just getting that imagination going as well when we're sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha relates that uh, Allah's Messenger was neither obscene nor lewd in behavior nor disposition um, nor was he boisterous in the markets, and he would not repay a misdeed with a misdeed, but he would pardon and forgive. Again, just building off of what we had last time here. Jabir ibn Abdullah shares that never did Allah's messenger say no to anyone who requested something of him. We talked about this a little bit that anybody, and just earlier now, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anybody who would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would not leave with at least something from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if that was just a good word. Um, if someone came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him for a favor, he would do what he could to fulfill it. Um, if they would ask him for anything, he would he would not give them a no. He would make sure that they are their needs are taken care of. And just imagine, we see the end point of that conversation. That person comes in with a request or whatever it may be, Prophet Sallallahu does not say no, he gives them something in that positive, and so they leave with something. But imagine the course of that conversation. The person is expressing a need to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi The person is talking about something that um, they, they may be lacking or missing or, or requesting, and the Prophet Sallallahu has not dismissed them at any point in the conversation. The Prophet Sallallahu assesses what they need and uh, understands what he can give, what he doesn't have, what he has, and is able to provide something uh, at the least that would satisfy what they may be looking for, even if it's not exactly what they had come for. But just think about what that what that conversation may look like, that the Prophet Sallallahu is really listening with a deep and attentive ear um, and not just trying to quickly solve that problem. He's, he's trying to listen intently, and then he assesses himself, what do I have? What do I not have? Seeing what his boundaries are, and then providing what he can within the means that he can. And and not to say the process of didn't ever you know stretch those means or or, or bend over backwards to do something. Um, he he would make sure he could do everything in his power to make sure that request was accommodated. Um, but at the least, if if he had nothing else, he would give a positive word. He would do something of encouragement. He would say something to make that person feel. Uh, if at the least they got nothing tangible, they got a blessed word from the Prophet Sallallahu which is invaluable. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri say, uh, says that the Prophet Sallallahu as we mentioned, was more bashful than a virgin in her quarters. And when he disapproved of something, we knew it from the expression on his face. So again, relating what Anas said, that the Prophet Sallallahu was not one to say oof or to say, you know, any kind of expletives or, or use this kind of frustration that would manifest here. So imagine ourselves speaking to the Prophet Sallallahu and we may say something that rubs the Prophet Sallallahu the wrong way, or that might be wrong to say. And the Prophet Sallallahu um, the expression that we see, it's, it's not one that comes and, uh, you know, it, it tells us to shut up or anything like that, anything aggressive. The Prophet Sallallahu you can see it because of his modesty, his humility, that uh, his body language is sufficient, that it, you can see it on his face that he's upset about it. And we see, uh, we, we uh, read in the earlier hadith um, that was shared by Imam Hassan ibn Ali, that how the Prophet Sallallahu uh, would uh, you know, he wouldn't be concerned so much of the of the ang the dunya, the the anger that would come into him would not so much come from the dunya, but it would come if truth was transgressed against. So think about that: truth would be transgressed, and then he would not have his anger quelled until that uh, justice was sought, until that. Um, injustice was corrected. So just thinking about who this person is as well. But we have an idea that the Prophet ﷺ sitting in this space, if he would become upset, we wouldn't see someone who would blow up like a volcano if we had mistakenly said something. You may see it on his face that he would be uh, d uh, disapproving of it and uh, or he would express it there, but not in a way that would make you feel um, you know, like, oh my gosh, like I'm on the hot seat or I'm, I'm, I've gotten burned now. Uh, he would do it in a way that's still respectful. Abdullah ibn Harith ibn Jaz shares that um, I had never saw anyone who smiled more than the Messenger of Allah. Again, thinking, not this is without even speaking, that you have someone uh, of the Prophet who the people know 
is just someone who's smiling. He's always, he's a cheerful, happy person. And imagine him in the conversations you're having, that when you have this person, this is someone that is a positive energy. So when we first have that sit down conversation with Prophet Sam, we can imagine just that positive energy walking into the room and just kind of being in the room. Uh, Jabin, Jabin Ibn Samura shares that his laugh was only that of a smile, that uh, he, 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 he would, when he would laugh, um, he would be very modest in, in in doing so. And there's some exceptions, as we mentioned, that when he would laugh at certain things um, and, and have like a true laughter, you would be able to see it, that he would he would be genuinely um, expressing it. Um, but he would be very modest, even in his laughter, uh, that he would just be smiling. Uh, and that you see how uh, Abdullah ibn Hadith shares that uh, he was someone who never saw anybody who smiled more than the Master of Allah. So thinking about that in our conversation here. So Jari ibn Abdullah shares that uh sorry, Jari ibn Abdullah shares that from the time I embraced Islam, the Messenger of Allah did not prevent me from seeing him, nor did he see me except that he would laugh or he would smile. Thinking about um this as well, that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu would be able to meet this companion, meet the Sahabi, and he uh doesn't see him except that he would laugh, he would smile, he would always be positive with this person. And of course, the Prophet Sallallahu meeting everyone where there are, it's not that he would treat every situation as a joke, but um there were uh he he would have um he would meet everybody with respect to where they may be emotionally. If you came to the Prophet Sallallahu with a great distress, with a great need or something, he wouldn't just laugh you off and just you know down play what you're going through. We shared the incident of the woman who came to the Prophet who uh, was known to have some kind of mental illness, was, was kind of outcast in this regard. And she comes to the Prophet and says, I have a need. And the people around the Prophet are already thinking that this woman's kind of crazy. This woman is, is not all there. Um, do, you know, why would you take her seriously? And the Prophet doesn't just ridicule her or just you know, doesn't say like, like, like to start laughing, like, oh, okay, yeah, tell me what you need. The Prophet says, point out any place you want to go and I'll meet you there and let's, let's talk about this and, and give them that presence. So uh, thinking that the process and when he, when, when we see reports like this, that he would obviously be the person that smiled the most and be the most joyful there, but he would also be someone who would recognize the needs. He would be very situationally aware of the other person and be able to be present to them so that he's not just, um, you know, just brushing them off in certain aspects that he met everybody as they needed. Um, and uh, in his emotional expressions, he would be modest. He wouldn't be boisterous, even in his laughing or uh, in, even in his anger. He would be someone who you could just, just kind of tell, but he would be sure to meet people where they were. Uh, with respect to his humor, um, we see that uh, the uh, Prophet was someone who was a humorous person, but his humor was distinct. His humor was something that uh, we see uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam share or, and, and talk about with respect to it being from a very modest standpoint. But uh, a few reports more about his laughter and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be someone who would be seen laughing and, and, and at times would be seen laughing in such a beautiful way that the companions would be just amazed because of his, uh, his beautiful appearance. But also, as we mentioned, you know, it's like seeing hailstones. It's like seeing, um, you know, just like snow, uh, like, you know, just seeing all these things um, coming from uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he is smiling and he has all his 32 teeth, you know, or show, so showing um, that he, he's, he's someone that it's as if we are just watching like a, uh, a phenomenon. You're just seeing something so white and glistening um, when, when this happens. And uh, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari shares that Allah's messenger uh, shares that, uh, said that, I surely know the first man who will enter the garden of paradise and the last man who will emerge from the fire of hell. The man will be brought forth on the day of resurrection and the command will be given, show him his minor sins and let his major sins be hidden from him. He will therefore be told on such and such day, you committed such and such and such and such sins. He will acknowledge his sins and not disavow them. And he will be fearful of those sins that are major offenses. So the command will be given in place of every bad deed he committed, grant him a good deed. He will therefore say, I am guilty of sins that I do not see here. Abu Dhar said that I saw Allah's messenger smile so broadly that his molar teeth showed. That you see uh, when the Prophet is also 
conveying uh, news, good news and uh, traditions and, and, and parts of the faith. He's not doing so from a harsh perspective. He's not, even though he was a warner and he was someone that had a heavy message to bear. Um, and he, he did narrate um, and share uh, uh, share uh, some gems that that would be uh, keeping people on their toes. Like if you in, in in one report he said that if you knew what I knew about you know the world and about uh, what is to come and about you know judgment and all that that if you knew what I knew you would cry plentifully and you would laugh little. But we still see in when the Prophet is conveying wisdom, when he's conveying the deen, when he's conveying the tradition, it's not solely from a perspective of fear. It's not solely from a perspective of, um, you know, shame or anything like that. The Prophet also uh, conveys it from a positive lens. The Prophet also conveys it uh, in a way that people remember how he was when he was sharing it. We see that sometimes he, fe he felt distressed at times sharing a heavy report. Uh, and other times when he would be sharing it, he he would be able to share it and and be so uh, smile and happy about it because um, of what what we what what the content is and what it what it may mean and and the mercy of Allah and uh, being positive about Allah and and being able to convey this from a nuance and not just from one perspective or another. So we sometimes see that. Uh, in our community where we uh, are given a message and, and talked about the faith and the religion and Islam. And oftentimes it's just from one lens. It's just from a, uh, a shame-based lens. It's from a negative lens. It's from a fear-based lens. Uh, but then also on the flip side, it may only be from a positive lens. It may only be from one that, that does not uh, talk about uh, some of the more difficult topics. It may be only from one space here. So the Prophet in his conveying of this, not just in his manner of speaking, but in his body language as well, in his emotions, would show the nuance that would go with it as well, that he would be able to show the balance that goes with conveying the message of Allah, the revelation, the teachings, and uh, aspects of the deen in this way. Uh, Ali ibn uh, Rabia shares that uh, I was... Uh, present when Ali, uh, may Allah be well pleased with him, had an animal brought for him to ride. And when he placed his foot in the stirrup, he said, in the name of Allah, uh, uh, Bismillah. And when he settled back on, uh, settled on its back, he said, praise be to Allah. And then he said, glory be to the one who has placed this at our disposal, for he would not have been equal to the task. And to our Lord, we are surely all returning. And then he said, praise be to Allah three times, and Allah is supremely great three times. And then he said, glory be to you. I have wronged myself, so forgive me, for no one forgives sins but you. Then he laughed. And so I said to him, what has made you laugh, O commander of the believers? Uh, oh, you know, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Um, and he said, I saw Allah's messenger, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, do just as I did now. After which he laughed. So I said, what has made you laugh, Rasulullah? And he replied, your Lord surely marvels at his servant when he says, my Lord, forgive me my sins, knowing that no one but he forgives sins. And so again, talking, we, we see this report related about um, the fourth Khalifa of Islam, Ali ibn Abi Talib and the beloved um, you know, cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, You see how uh, Imam Ali in this, in this uh, narration relates um, you know, the prayers that he's offering and how um, someone next to him here is 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 marveling at, uh, you know, the, these prayers. And, 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 and then he himself, uh, you know, started to laugh and, you know, has this repeat event of what just happened uh, with him and the Prophet Sallallahu And we see again, just to the point we were making earlier, how the Prophet Sallallahu was also um, in conveying the deen in, in modeling the deen in talking about theology and sharing, you know, belief about Allah, all these different wisdoms would not not just do it from one lens would do something uh would, would be able to express himself emotionally he wasn't just that person who had a frown on and you know just always looked angry that this is the religious person he would be someone who uh would would be able to to talk to people meet them where they are but also share his own emotion uh when processing what he has just kind of heard and we see even in in battle as well, uh, we know the Prophet was not someone who was an aggressor, uh, was not someone who actively sought out 
um, battle and, and with respect to um, apart from it being from a defensive posture or apart only when Allah had commanded it. Uh, but we see even in battle, um, wh wh which was something, as we mentioned, the Prophet did not desire, but even in battle when things would be going abysmally or when things went well, uh, there were reports from uh, the likes of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas that the Prophet when he would uh, see um, you know, a companion be able to uh, take down you know, someone from the enemy side or uh, meet their target successfully, um, the Prophet would laugh or the Prophet would be uh, would be able to express uh, his, his emotion in those spaces. And so the Prophet being, again, a human being as well, uh, apart from being uh, his stature and his daraja and his, uh, who he is, um, he was still someone who would be able to have emotional reactions um, at, 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 in these different moments uh, that so many of his other companions also went through. Anas ibn Malik shares that um, with respect to the humor, now we transition in our final part here to a little bit of the humor of the Prophet Sallallahu that Anas ibn Malik shares the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi once sent to him, O oh, two-eared one, ya dhal uh, udhu nain, um, that, uh, that just when he, when he was calling to him and he, he called him, oh, two-eared one, you know, it's hard for us to sometimes appreciate the jokes that might be shared here, the humor that might be shared, just because, you know, the, 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 the humor is just different, one, across cultures, across society, but across time as well. So for us, it may be like, well, that's not really funny. It's not the, the, the objective of sharing these uh, humorous insights to the process um, and sharing his humor is not to, you know, create any kind of like a, a comedy sketch or anything like that and, and or to try and laugh at, you know, the joke that's being shared and see that we can't understand it. But understanding in the context, this was something as well that was seen as humorous. And so, you know, the process I'm calling to Anna says, oh, two-eared one, um, the commentary that comes with this hadith talks about how the process I'm was someone being lighthearted with Anas by calling him a name other than his actual name, which actually might have actually been a compliment due to Anas being uh, someone known as an attentive listener and being someone who's able to understand deeply. And we see a uh, hadith that, that helps to give a bit of a foundation to the Prophet's humor, where Abu Huraira shares that the companions once said to the Prophet, you are lighthearted with us, O Prophet. And the Prophet replied, yes. However, I only speak the truth. And you see, we oftentimes, when we think about humor, when we think about jokes, we, we may think about uh, a sketch we may have heard, we may have seen a, a movie or may have seen something that made us laugh, a video or whatnot. But oftentimes, how, are, how often are they grounded in 100% truth? How often do they maybe stretch the truth or they may just tell a white lie or they may just kind of go into that space? And the Prophet would engage in lighthearted speech and everything he said would be truthful. And Imam Nawawi shares that, the for uh, the forbidden and disliked kind of humor is that which is antithetical to this or is that which is kind of in excess is undignified is causing the heart to harden and it distracts an individual from their obligations and remembrance of Allah it's the kind of humor that's unchecked that leads to hurting feelings of others that leads to telling lies that leads to exaggeration and it's these kinds of jokes and it's these kinds of humor that can lead to real harm um not just uh from a physical standpoint but intrapersonally socially relationally as well as spiritually uh we see the prophet would also have light interact light-hearted interactions um with children and not just with adults or anybody again he would be a person that was dynamic. He was not a static individual. He would be able to meet people at their level of understanding. So imagine the Prophet um, talking to some children. And in this case, Anas ibn Malik relates that, um, you know, he, uh, the Prophet would lightheartedly interact with us. And he even once said to a younger brother of mine, oh, Abu Umair, what happened to the Nugair? Uh, and the Nugair refer, refers to a small bird. Uh, and in this context, the brother of Anas ibn Malik had a pet bird um, that had died. And he was extremely upset. And so when the Prophet Sallallahu came to visit the comforted little child, he spoke in a rhyme, in a gentle humor. So he said, uh, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala nugair. That how, like, you know, how, what happened to the bird? Like, you know, he, you kind of see how Abu Umair, ma fa'ala nugair, you know, he sees that, has, has, how, how, how are you kind of connecting? Um, you know, how are you doing? But be able to speak in a gentle way. Um, and just imagine the Prophet Sallallahu coming and not dismissing this child. Uh, you know, they obviously 
uh, cared for this bird, cared for this pet. Um, and you see the Prophet ﷺ come and talk to this child in a way that he can connect with the child, but also in a way that just shows that he's not there as a 100% completely serious presence that's like, you know, intimidating. He's there just meeting the child and, and seeing how he can uh, help the child. And even if it's just by kind of sitting with him. Anas ibn Malik also relates that a man once asked the Prophet Sallallahu for a mount and the Messenger of Allah said to him, I will give you the child of a she-camel as a mount. And the man said that, O Messenger of Allah, what am I going to do with the child of a she-camel? And the Messenger of Allah replied, do not all she-camels give birth to camels? Again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi just being humorous in this regard that uh, I'll give you the child of a she-camel. And the man thinks about all, all, you know just a small baby camel or just a young camel. And he's like, what am I going to do with that? But he's like, aren't all camels basically the child of she-camels? And, and you know, just uh, I'll give you a, a, you know, a proper camel, but uh, just playing with the person in that aspect. But again, look at how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, what I, the, the humor I use with you is truthful. So he's not telling a lie. Um, but he's also um, not just being a completely 100% serious person. He's, he's someone that uh, is also, um, you know, pulling uh, the leg of some of his companions in, in terms of helping them be lighthearted as well, because we think about this society that the Prophet ﷺ came to. This was a society that was completely out of bounds in certain ways. They were going to extremes in certain aspects. They were defined by a hyper and toxic masculinity. Um, they were also defined by excess. And so, you know, they, there was no bounds here. But the Prophet ﷺ showing them that Islam's not just a 100% complete 180 away from every single thing that you previously knew. Islam brings things back in check. But you can still be someone who is a, a dynamic person, someone who's humorous. You don't have to lose that but there's a proper way to do that with islam now and as it also shares that there was a man among uh, the people in of the desert his name was zahir and he used to bring the prophet ﷺ a present from the desert so the prophet ﷺ would equip him when he wished to go out to battle and the prophet ﷺ said zahir is our desert and he and we are his towns and he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to love him, though he was a homely man. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came to him one day while he was selling his, uh, his wares and his merchandise and embraced him from behind so that he couldn't see who it was. So imagine this Zahir is uh, selling things in, in the marketplace and it's just, you know, doing, you know, out, out doing his, his, uh, his personal trade. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi comes and embraces him from behind and, and holds him from behind um, so that he couldn't see who it was and so Zahir says who is this like let go of me so like you know he's he's being held and he's just like what, what's happening he's like let go of me and then he turns around and he recognizes the Prophet ﷺ. and once he recognizes the Prophet ﷺ, he keeps his back uh pressed to the chest he's like all right you know this is the Prophet ﷺ. like you know this is this is fine he's uh you know I I I love this person and the Prophet ﷺ, uh is holding this person and says uh, uh, holding Zahir, and he says that who will buy this Abd of mine? Who will buy this servant of mine? Um, as if he's 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 just calling out to the people in in a jest that who like you know he's in the marketplace. He's like, who's going to take this servant of mine? Who's going to buy this servant of mine? And the man replies to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that. Uh, oh, Messenger of Allah, in that case, by Allah, you will find me an unsellable commodity uh, because I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just someone from the desert. I'm, I'm, I'm not worth much or whatnot. I, what am I going to fetch? What, what am I going to get there? And uh, you see, this person just downplays himself. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, says to him, no, rather you are not an unsellable commodity in the view of Allah. Uh, and said that you are precious to Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu using a very humorous situation where he comes uh, and embraces his companion. Um, he, he, he jokes with him and, and, and the companion is a little bit confused. But then at the end of this interaction, he builds his companion up when the companion himself is like, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a regular guy. I'm just I'm not worthy of, you know, anybody taking me in or anything. And they're talking in jest. Uh, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uses this as a teaching moment as well to say no, rather than regardless of who you are, and how society might define you and where you might be in, 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 in the social ladder as other people see in Allah's eyes, you are invaluable. You are precious to Allah. So seeing how the humor of the Prophet ﷺ was used to bring people together, was used to not just unite hearts, but not just uh, in that aspect, but to also build up faith, to build up character, and to build up people um, who previously may not have seen themselves as worthy in different ways. So the Prophet I'm using his humor as a tool for enhancing spirituality and character development. 
Uh, Imam Hassan al-Basri shares that an old woman once came to the Prophet ﷺ, and this will be our final narration, that an old woman once came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Messenger of Allah, beseech Allah to let me enter the Garden of Paradise. Beseech Allah to let me under enter Jannah. And he replied, O mother of so-and-so, no old woman will enter the Garden of Paradise. And she turned away weeping, obviously hearing this. She's like, oh my gosh. So he turns away weeping and the Prophet sub says, no, 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 uh, you know, not, not, uh, you know, and it, it's, you know, not in that regard. He said that, uh, you know, oh, mother of so-and-so, uh, you will not enter it as an old woman for Allah says in the Quran, we have created them a new creation and we've made them virgins, loving and equal in age uh, and, 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 and kind of meets her back. But you see, how the Prophet is also uh, in his humor uh, respectful, but also you can see as soon as that joke may go over somebody or as soon as it may not be taken uh, or as soon as it may not be understood properly, the Prophet goes in and fully clarifies. He doesn't just say, oh, uh oh, like, you know what, that uh, um, that person can't take a joke or anything like that. The Prophet immediately consoles this person. So, um, you know, this old woman comes to the Prophet and is asking him, please pray for me to uh, let me enter Jannah. And and the Prophet just uh, from a humorous standpoint said, uh, you know, you know that uh, no old woman will enter Jannah. Uh, and and this this immediately just she 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 uh, you know she doesn't get the joke and she doesn't understand it in that sense and it hurts her and she's just like oh no like you know has has this worried feeling and she starts to weep she she starts to grieve and we see the Prophet instantly just thinking about when something may go over somebody you have a person that is described as being shyer than a virgin in their quarters. It's have somebody who looks more at the ground than they do above. You have someone whose modesty, character is, is distinguished, someone who doesn't hold gatherings where people are insulted or anything like that. Um, you can't imagine that this scenario is one where the Prophet is insulting this woman or would leave this woman out to dry um, without saying that, recognizing that this person is obviously hurt. This person is obviously scared and this person is weeping. And he says, no, no, no. Like, you know, he consoles her and he says, rather no old, uh, he said, you will not enter it as an old woman, because as Allah says, you will be there uh, brought out anew, as all of us will. Uh, and so he uses it as a point to make it. But we see even in this moment, when uh, a joke may go over someone's head, or when it doesn't get, uh, when it doesn't get you know, registered as, as we may intend it, that we don't just leave it out there. We don't just assume something about that person, especially when it hurts them. Prophet some going in and talking to this person and saying, no, that's not, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, just kind of going to and helping to comfort that person. Uh, and and so uh, what this shows us is, one, the Prophet ﷺ was being humorous with people who were not just men. The Prophet ﷺ was being uh, humorous with uh, miscellaneous women that would uh, come seek his help uh, in the in the community or whether they were elderly or whether they were younger um, and seeking his help or counsel. Um, we see this uh, when he interacts in, in outside of the Shema'il al -Tirmidhi. There's also the interactions that the Prophet has with Aisha in a very humorous way, interacting with her. Uh, we see the interactions with children and having the humor with them. And so you see that the Prophet, as we conclude here, was someone that we reiterate was a very dynamic individual, was someone who was emotionally intelligent, was someone who was very cognizant uh, of who would enter into the conversation with them, but was also someone who would not just be static. He would he would uh, employ humor when it would be appropriate. He would be someone who would uh, would employ. There, his wisdom in different ways. He would, he would, he would listen to another person's need, and he would register it as there, and he would not make them feel isolated. So his speech, his humor, was one that was eloquent. It was one that was, um, it was untainted in any way, and it was at the at the crux of it, it was truthful. It was one that was rooted in honesty. Prophet never spoke a lie in this regard and never uh, told a lie with respect to humor and with respect to joking. And he would never have to stretch a joke. He would he would model the best kind of speech, the, the kind of speech that if you're gathered with people who are Ivy League graduates or people who have not had a formal education or training in anything and be able to sit in a room and they take away 
and understand what the Prophet says clearly. Like this was the kind of person that's there, but he's also someone who would not be a, a, a dull personality. He's someone who's very exciting in his personality, someone who is respectful in his personality. And when something would discomfort somebody, when someone when something would hurt somebody uh in, in any way, he would be one of the he would be the first person to comfort them. We see how he was with the brother of Anas ibn Malik to talk to him about his his bird who passed away, his pet bird. Um, to a child that passed away and comforting this child and to this woman who uh, didn't get uh, his, his joke, he still comforted her and said, no, 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 that's not uh, what, what was meant. He said, look, Allah says this and uh, wishes her well. And, and immediately her expression changes and what she takes away changes. And uh, we see that, that just imagining who this person is, you can't imagine someone who would take advantage of anybody or would be harsh with anybody or would exploit anybody or would use their language to harm harm anybody or would use their humor to hurt anybody. This was someone who used their speech, used their humor, used their laughter to bring people together, to enhance them in their spirituality, to enhance them in their personal and their character development, but at the end of the day, to also show them how to properly be in this world and to exist with all others and then most of all uh, in the relationship they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, we conclude there. We have a few more sessions, a couple more sessions, inshallah, left in our series, but we're getting to the end. Um, it's been a privilege so far to be able to walk through this with you. And until next time, uh, we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.